to Spartaca Fight League Radio with your hosts, Mikey B and Chris Alani. Let's go to war! It's fight time! Welcome to SFL Radio Video. Sweet. We're here at UFC Gym Norfolk. 5930 East Virginia Beach Boulevard, Norfolk, Virginia. This is our, our new sponsor, so we wanted to announce the sponsorship at the sponsor's location. I'm here with Chris Alani, my co-host. How you doing? Eddie Mercado. The Eddie Mercado. Uh, yeah, you can do that. And then we're here with <laughs> Dan Brooks, the general manager of the UFC gym. What's going on, guys? How's it going, Dan? Good, good, good. Good. Well, well first, thank you for coming on board with us, and thank you for having us here. Yeah, man, we're super excited. Uh, I've always been a big fan of Spartaca Fight League in general. Um, just really excited to be a part of the podcast, guys. I mean, you guys are doing good things. So Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So if you hear uh, grunts and moans and hitting and slapping and general mayhem in the background, we are <laughs> live in the gym. So there's people training right now. Bells are going off. There's a kids' jiu-jitsu class going on in the ring. We're literally doing uh, the cast right next to the octagon. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> yeah. We're going to hop in there in about... Five minutes. I can't wait. <laughs> I, me and Chris, so that's that's, that's another what, thing. Yeah. Me and Chris are training here now, which is awesome. You yeah. guys are yeah. kicking our butts, dude. You guys are like, <laughs> especially Chris. Like Chris is like, man, I gotta do like three a days, man. Like, I gotta do, I gotta work out three times a day. Yeah, he's I, uh, seventeen hours a day. He calls me to. in the middle of the night and he's like, "What class are we doing this week?" And I'm like, "Dude, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Chill out." <laughs> yeah, man. No, definitely love the enthusiasm though. That's like, that's the thing though. That's, it's addictive that's how, too. It is, man. It's you know? super cool. It's it feels, that, yeah. it feels great. The app and makes it so easy. It is. So uh, I think that's one of the big things I've noticed uh, just from being at tons of different gyms. And then this, you guys have an app, which is so awesome that you basically sit at home and you can pull up all the classes yeah. and then just, I always say, your eyes get bigger than your stomach because you're sitting on the couch yeah, and you're all comfy. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, well, that looks cool. Yeah. Sign up. Yeah. Oh, look at that one. Sign up. And then you're like, I got to take these classes. Yeah, yeah. You got to <laughs> sign up. It's just like you're, you're selecting your classes and you're you're setting yourself up for uh, for mayhem, man. Yeah. Good stuff, yeah. though. But Good it's mayhem. Not, it's nice. <laughs> tell, us, tell us more about the gym. Man, I tell you what, like, I've been in the martial arts game for, like, my whole entire life. Uh, started when I was 10, and uh, I was at another martial arts school, kind of worked my way up to a management position there, and uh, stumbled across the UFC gym. This was uh, open. This gym's been open for about three years, um, actually, in August. But I stumbled across it, and it was a really cool concept, uh, having everything underneath, like, one roof, as, as far as, like, weightlifting, cardio, uh, you know, martial arts classes, conditioning classes for boxing and kickboxing. So it, it, as far as, like, what you're getting and what you're gaining uh, with the gym, it's great, man. You have everything underneath one umbrella. It's what we say, or one roof. It's, it's really cool, as opposed to going to a gym and then driving to your martial arts gym afterwards. Yep. It's, it's, it's all in one spot, and our coaches here are incredible. Uh, we got one coach here, uh, Coach Nelson. He's in the Martial Arts Hall of Fame. This guy has been training for over, you know, 40 years. We got a Thai guy that's been do, we're doing stuff for 40 years. So our guys are great, man. Really yeah. reputable. And as Nelson says, when you sweat, it's your fat crying. Yes. That's what he tells me. <laughs> so, and that's <laughs> why I cry a lot in class. I have very emotional fat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, what you said, I do, I like that about this gym is that, you know, I grew up um, training martial arts and then, of course, in special ops community before I retired. Um, I, I do a lot of like uh, unconventional workouts and I love that you guys have that here you have the battle ropes yeah. you've got the big tires to yeah. flip so you, you can do all the CrossFit stuff you can do the, the free weights yeah. you can do the cardio and, and I think a lot of people uh, don't understand that it's like it, even though it has the UFC name on it uh, it's not necessarily just for mixed martial arts it's yeah. actually yeah. yeah that's like one of our biggest challenges sometimes like people come in and they're, they're scared they're terrified of the name and it's and, and, and we tell them we fight everything here we fight you know obesity we fight uh, you know you being unhealthy we get you back in shape we we fight everything here it's not just you know getting in the ring and fighting each other it's it's everything so. it's nice i like it yeah well you know speaking back in shape you know me and mike we were joking in the video you know, like we're kind of like a circular shape so hopefully by the end of this uh journey of ours uh you know we'll be more you know more triangular yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, or maybe triangular. we'll get you two in the sfl cage at some point we actually, actually we've already videos. talked about we that talked about about unofficially charity uh fundraiser uh, exhibition okay yeah yeah so. yeah uh, i really feel like they should do it like 100 percent it has so to be too. with sumo suits and big <laughs> boxing gloves. With both? Yeah, yeah. both. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every, every single gimmick we can think of, we're going to throw it in there. You're making a lot of sense, Dan. Yeah, right? <laughs> Am I right? 
Am I right? Hey, I'm it's, with it's recorded now, so someone's going to bring it up later, which is fine. <laughs> I, I would tune into that for sure. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you guys have? I know you have a promotion going on. Actually, it started the day that I first came in, uh, the Shred Challenge. Yeah, right. We got the we have a Shred Challenge going on uh, for the entire month of July. Uh, so basically, uh, we have some of our members that are in, uh, involved in this contest, and it's a contest to see who loses uh, uh, the most uh, uh, body fat percentage as okay. far as the weight workout goes. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it is about losing fat, but it's uh, based off of BPI, body fat. Uh, so it's uh, it's a one month long. The grand prize winner gets a six month membership uh, for free. Uh, it's been really cool so far, man. It's been going on for two weeks. We keep track of all the weight uh, progress and all that stuff. We have about 15 people involved in the pro uh, the uh, the challenge, so it's going pretty well. Yeah. Excellent. I've seen them train here uh, a couple of them after one of our classes. They get it's pretty super intense, intense. Yeah, because they get they actually train with the trainer, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, so you have a one in fifteen chance of winning. You do. <laughs> <laughs> That's good odds. Those are good. Great yeah, odds. those are great. Those are great odds. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and you're interested in joining <laughs> up, I know we worked a little deal out with you for SFL Radio listeners. Contact me or Chris, or just come in and talk to Dan directly and tell yeah. him uh, SFL Radio sent you, and you can come in and actually uh, sweat it out with us. Yeah, it'll be super fun. Dan's Love official too. I can I can say from personal experience. Dan I was you guys actually, go way back, right? Yeah, yeah. Dan was actually yeah. one of my very first Thai instructors. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, he I taught named, me how to throw I punches and drop kicks. Eddie Everywhere in town, just I figure everybody knows him. So no matter where I go, I'm like, do you know Eddie Mercado? And then I did that with you, and it worked. You did know him. Oh so. yeah, that's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I've known Eddie for a super long time. We go back, man, long, long time. Many, many moons, many moons. Many moons. So you kicked his butt, basically. Oh, yeah. all the time. Pretty much. <laughs> well, I, I one, I deserved it, and two, I needed it. Yeah. So. Did he have the hair, the sweet hair? Then he did. Actually, oh. I, I envy him. Uh, you have sweet hair too. No, but I like the top knot thing. I have no like hair. I've always wanted to do the same right man top bun. Knot. Yeah, no, it's the top knot. We got to call it the top knot. It's way cooler than a man. In bun. the gym, it's a top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. In Ghent, Norfolk, it's a, it's yeah, a, it's Dan, a, it's yeah. a man bun. Dan, you're making a lot of sense again. I know. Right? <laughs> Cool. Well, Dan, I know you're busy. You got a ton of stuff going on. Thank you for sitting down with yeah, us. Yeah, man, no problem. We're going to be doing a lot of our cast here, so people are going to get familiar. I think, wait, if there's nothing going on, we'll put the stuff in the ring. We'll do it in the ring. Yeah, maybe one time we'll get that done. And maybe then we can just it. fight right off the table. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be fun. <laughs> Chairs and everything. Smash Chris through the table. We'll throw kettlebells at you. <laughs> Power <laughs> bombs. <be> awesome. <laughs> Cool. Once again, thank you for coming out. Uh, 5930 East Virginia Beach Boulevard, yep. UFC Gym Norfolk. All of our SFL radio podcasts are going to be brought to you by them. So uh, look forward to uh, future endeavors. Absolutely. Get some. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be back. SFL radio. SFL Radio. We are back at the UFC gym in Norfolk. SFL Radio. This is like episode 10, I think. But this is video episode number one, which is the most important. Yes. I, I yes. think so. So I am here, Mikey V, with my I'm boy. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm Chris Alain. I thought we were doing the same way. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, weird. it's weird when we're on yeah, video. Yeah, it's weird. Like, the what video. do I do with my hands? Yeah. The Eddie Mercado. Oh, wait. Yeah. And uh, Shane Graham. The mm. voice. That voice. The voice. Thank you for joining us, guys. Shane. See, now it actually mattered, like, what we wear. And, like, usually we did it at my house, and everybody was, like, shirtless. We can't do that anymore. And, yep. and, and, yep. and I almost feel out of place here because I'm sitting here looking around the table, and everybody here except for me either has a beard or sunglasses. Eddie has, has both. 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 In Eddie's case, yeah. And I'm, the, double, uh, I'm double dipping. He's double, double dipping. dipping for SFL Triple radio. dipping with the, uh, the man with the, knot. Back off my man knot, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Hands off the man knot. Earlier, earlier it was a top <laughs> bun, now it's a tent. We'll just mix it up. It's man, all good. man knot. What do you uh, want it to be, Eddie? I want it to be what it'll be. 
Okay. I'm going to say a samurai do. Samurai is That's yeah, probably yeah, the go. coolest the thing I've ever done. So we, yeah. we actually have a class going on right in front of us. Uh, yes, this we do. The, this is the DUT class, D-U-T class. It's a uh, high-intensity interval training. Uh, we did it the other day, twice. Pretty intense. Quit so bragging. We get to yeah, watch. You're bragging about your, your peak physical condition. Yeah, I'm still oh, fat. Half of the exercise <laughs> was just for me. now. Yeah, part of the exercise was all abs for because I was trying not to throw up. We were doing. Trying to keep yeah, it down. at one point he was in the downward facing dog, and I was like, Chris, it's not downward facing dog, dude. It's burpees. And he's like, I'm I can't. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Mikey V, I'm stuck. So people are. People are. There are people staring at us like, what are these guys doing? So they'll what? get used to us. They'll get used to it. Absolutely. So, uh, man, we just took a two-week break from recording. Uh, SFL 34 we came off of. That was insane. Yeah, that card was wild. Uh, that's that's oh, one way to put it. it. Three titles on the line uh, at that event. We had uh, Tyus Thomas and Joseph Bishop. Tyus Thomas walking away as the new 205-pound champion. Or still, wasn't it? No, he was still. No, oh, uh, still. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Pardon uh, in me. fact, all of the title fights, yep. everybody retained. Everyone yes, retained. Every, every, every champion retained their uh, retained their belts. Uh, Troy Kane maintained a uh, unanimous decision over David Simpson. We're going to be seeing him, David Simpson, yep. at uh, SFL 35. And the upset of the night, a lot of people would say, Corey Champion and Samson Saucer. Yeah, that was a crazy, that was crazy a fight. That was a crazy fight. Oh my gosh! We got to work on Corey's uh, <coughs> vocals on the mic because he's a, of all the of all the interviews, it, like you know, because he's the last interview of the night, and it's always super loud in the Ted Conson Center with all the music and the people and the hype. But by the time he comes down out of the ring, because you know, especially the main event, they want a million mm-hmm. pictures. Oh, yeah. everybody's packing up by the time we get him, so it's dead quiet. And he's like, <sighs> he's like super quiet. And I'm like, bro, if the music was playing, they wouldn't even hear you. <laughs> he's, he's very soft spoken. He is super soft, which is, is. is crazy considering how explosive. He I say is he's in an the game. animal. Yeah. The first time I saw him fight, and then I heard him talking, I was like, did not expect did a match. That. Yeah, because <laughs> he's so like an animal in the ring, and then he gets on the mic and he's like, you know, yeah, it's like he has one of those kill switches. You know what I mean? Like he just turns it on. And, <laughs> yeah, he's like yeah. the Michael Jackson of MMA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but <laughs> so uh, SFL 34, you can check it out at Fight uh, TV if you want to uh, see the it's see it in its entirety with the Eddie Mercado's incredible commentary. You had Marshall uh, Shermer as a guest yeah, commentator, so correct? Marshall Shermer, his fight fell through unfortunately, so we didn't get to see him compete. But he did get on the microphone and commentate the first couple of bouts for yeah. S- SFL 34. Right. And uh, if you want to watch individual fights, you can catch those on our YouTube channel, which is where this is going to be posted. And if you're watching this and you want to just listen, because, you know, like me, I'm not a big video person, obviously, look at it, but uh, <laughs> we're still going to be on SoundCloud. You are uh, a handsome man. Would you stop sure, with that? You. And uh, that's why we're working on it here, here at, at the, the UFC gym in Norfolk. Because eventually <laughs> I want to do these shirtless, you know, yeah, yeah. just be like, Ugh. you know, but uh, we're, we're going like, to be Like doing we do without video. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So those will still be, uh, audio will still be on SoundCloud, we'll still be on Google Play, we're still fighting with iTunes. <laughs> it's like an MMA match to get this on iTunes, I don't know why. That's probably the main matchup for that uh, for SFL yeah, 35. I was going to say, <laughs> it's, it's, it's iTunes. SFL Radio versus <laughs> iTunes. Uh, well, if, if, if it's any consolation, any sort of Apple product or, any, you know, is... Yeah. Th- they're very much the beat of their own It's not that they're drum. not approving us, it's that we're having ish- tech issues yeah. with they're very the, finicky. the link. And it's like, but they also make exceptional equipment. So if oh they would God. like to sponsor, if they would love to sponsor us, oh, they do. <laughs> more to have. Oh, yeah. oh, dude, Apple does As what they do, do exceptionally well. I'm, yes. an, I'm an Apple ho all day. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm a label whore for, for, yeah. for Apple. I'll say, I'll get so, a bad uh, one. Upcoming, we got SFL 35 August 11th. TKO for the Tatas. Mm-hmm. Let's that's going to be it. that's going to be an amazing card. That's as what well. we're talking we, about today. Yeah, yeah we, we, we were talking before too about Martial Law Shermer. Mm. That's his new nickname, by the way. Yeah. Did you Marshall see his Law? T-shirts? Yeah, he, he came out with this, he, and he was posting things. You know, the definition of martial law. Yeah, and uh, he's embracing it. He, he he certainly is. Uh, I like and it. This I kid, like it. This kid embraces the mixed martial arts game as a whole. It's yeah. always entertaining to watch Marshall and his brother. Uh, they're 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 really cool guys inside and outside of the cage. Um, for he's, me, I, I love I love announcing their names, you know, and just associating with them inside and outside of the. Cage. He's a great he's a great interview too. And it, so. yeah, he, he's he's a good all around kid, and really looking forward to watching him compete. His uh, his initial fight with no, he he beat Scott Pachak. Yeah, he was supposed to fight Jacob Ashley at SFL 34, but Ashley unfortunately got injured. That's they what brought it was. in a replacement. Uh, unfortunately, he was un- he had some weight cutting <laughs> issues, so the fight fell through altogether, and he ended up just commentating a couple of fights. Yeah. So. Oh, we just got Butter in the building. I see you, Butter, butter in the going building. On. Whoop, whoop. 
So, Butter does a lot for Spartacle Fight League, yeah. so we yeah, like to shout him out. A bunch we of uh, volunteers are gonna be coming out to hang yeah. out today while we do this. Um, he's fighting Elias Local Briley, uh, who we've actually had on the show a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. Another awesome guy. Oh my god! Another oh my god. Like, I love that embodiment kid, of the sport. Super energetic, super humble, great guy. Uh, he just came off of a fight with Quentin Gray, SFL 34. Yep. Uh, which about a TKO, a Doctor Stoppage TKO. Yep. yep. Doctor Stop. Um, so basically, he's got two he, SFL 33 and 34. He's coming off back-to-back -back wins. He's super pumped up. Uh, he's fighting out of North Carolina. Uh, you know, Marshall's a three-win streak. So I mean, the two of them. And it's going to be compelling. It, it's 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 almost like team versus team in a way. Uh, so you have Elias Briley. He's a team Abu guy. Uh, which is uh, Tanil, who's like best friends with Diego Bispo. Diego Bispo is Marshall's yep. Jiu Jitsu coach. So it's almost like team versus team in a way, but it, it's nothing but love. Like these oh, guys, yeah. they're, they're friends, they respect each other. So don't expect a bunch of trash talking no, uh, leading no, up to this. But two. Well, it, it Elias be, isn't like that anyway either. So. Yeah, but both of these guys can be quite vocal. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. certainly yeah. can. But, but we're uh, gonna, we'll poke and prod a little bit, but they're, they're fun. Yeah, they're, and, they're uh, teammates. These are the guys that after the fight, they're going to go hang out, which yeah, is cool. For sure. Um, I, that's the uh, the featherweight interim title. And then Correct. after that, that's gonna u there'll be a match at SFL 36 to unify the title. Correct, with, with Jacob, Jacob Ashley. Ashley. Yeah. Yes, so that's going to be exciting. Uh, we also have uh, Adrian Soto Perez and Joe Huggins. El Savaje. Going at it, yep. Yeah, that's an inter interesting matchup. We saw Huggins, he fought at SFL 34 against Rob Shermer, Marshall's yep. older brother. Uh, it was a very close fight. It might have even won fight of the night. Uh, I'm not sure if, if I can't remember that came out or not, but I think it might have been fight of the night. Um, but Huggins, he, he, he showed some pretty good wrestling, some good top control. And uh, Soto Perez is hungry, man. He's a fearless fighting guy. He's had his uh, opponent back out quite a few times, so he hasn't been able to fight as regularly as he wanted to. But uh, luckily, his opponent showed up at SFL 34. I mean, he put on a very dominant performance. Yeah, thir 31 seconds in the first round. It was Rob White, and yeah. it was that was it. It was it was a shellacking, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> for lack of better terms. Yeah. So that's that's gonna be fireworks, man. I'm I'm really looking forward to that one as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Uh, let's see. We we got a we got a. Awesome card that night. We talked about David Simpson. He's fighting oh, Will Worley. Yeah, so yeah. that's going to be that's going to be a nice one. I like that. the last Absolutely. time we saw uh, we saw David Simpson. He actually moved up a weight class just to fight for the belt. Yep. So he's a true 170 er but just to, just to get the fight and just to go for a belt, he, he decided to move up a weight class. Put on a strong, uh, a gutsy performance against Troy Kane, at SFL 34. Uh, it wasn't his night; it didn't go his way. He didn't get the decision, but uh, he's dropping back down to 170 to face Will Worley for the belt. So I like to call that the battle of the beards. The battle okay. of the beards, yeah, yeah. And, and I think this will be a true striker versus grappler match as well. Uh, uh, David Simpson, you know, very well, very well known for his his prowess on his feet. Will, uh, will the. Uh, Will the Wolverine. Wolverine. That's what it was. Yeah, Wolverine. yeah, the Wolverine Will Worley. His wrestling is second to none. Well, I know Will he also has some pretty mean Muay Thai also. Does he does because, you know, he, he uh, went with Imani, Imani Smith and he went the distance yeah. with Mitch Aguiar, which I think going the distance with Mitch Aguiar says, says a lot just that. Ab well. Absolutely. A lot, that, of people, that a lot of people actually think that Will Worley won that fight against Mitch Aguiar. Really? Yeah. I didn't see that fight. It, it's on uh, SFL's uh, YouTube channel, I believe. Okay, I and, will look it up. And uh, point of uh, point to note, that is the only fight, I believe, out of all of Mitch's fights that ever went the distance. Mm. All of Mitch's wow. fights, win or loss, okay. never went the distance. So that's going to be a good one. Fact. And uh, I can tell you that every time David Simpson comes on, he just puddles sweat. Oh, all yeah. over the interview table, <laughs> yeah. and, and it's all out of his beard. Yep. His, I'm catching up to him with the beard. I'm getting there. So when I filmed his promo video for SFL 34, at, it, w it was during one of his training sessions, and afterwards there's just puddles of sweat <laughs> all over the, 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 the cage, and it's just like, man, like this dude, he works freaking hard. Oh, yeah. Like, it was our first, our first ringside podcast. We had him here after he had won, and he was sitting at the table, and it was like all I could do was just like stare at his beard, and it was like a faucet just coming out. Yep. And I was like, that's amazing. Actually, Actually, you know what? If you go, if you go and watch his SFL 34 promo vid, I think there's actually a clip of him just like mid workout, just exhausted and just sweat dripping sweat. from his beard. <laughs> um, I think I slow mo it, so you can like slow mo. <laughs> Does sweat drip from my beard when I work out, or do I not do it? That it drips from well, everywhere. It's swept, yeah, I just, when you just said from every orifice of your body, it's like, just coming out. I feel like maybe I'm not pore, at that level yet. Every pore is crying. I'm, I'm working on that. Your beard is crying. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we got uh, Alistair Patterson and uh, Zach Taylor. 
And a- actually, Alistair Patterson was cool because we interviewed him before SFL 34, even though he didn't fight. Yep. So if you want to see that, that was episode 7, which we did live from Ocean 27. So you can hear him in a full, I think, about 30-minute, 40-minute interview. Yeah, the ambition, Alistair Patterson, uh, a veteran of the Spartica cage. It hasn't fought in the past few Spartacas. I'm definitely looking forward to watching him come back. I've seen a lot of his uh, a lot of his training videos. I mean, he was a solid fighter to begin with, and now he's with the likes of, you know, Mitch Aguiar, Demond the Bull Miner, Marshall Law, Shermer. Well, he doesn't train with Mitch Aguiar. There's... Uh, they, they're, 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 they've uh, been doing some open, you know, some cross training. They're definitely on opposite ends of the spectrum. I think they had a they had a little beef back when uh, Mitch was fighting Brandon, and I think it never got. Squashed. But are they selfie buddies? Because I thought I saw I, I, pictures yeah, of them. I, like, they, recently. they recently did have a selfie with them together yeah. of him. It was him, Marshall, him, Marshall, Mitch, and Demond. Did yeah. he? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so I I would okay. like to believe that their their beef was squashed. Social I know media doesn't was, lie, dude. At yeah, all. Okay. Yeah. Whatever whatever you see on social <laughs> media is true. But it was, it was on Facebook, so it must be true. No fake news, though, guy. For sure. Hey, they're all in the fight game, you know. So at the end of the day, you know, they all have the same the same mission, you know. Even though they might be facing each other in the cage, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to believe that you know they, it's all they've team hugged MMA and, you know, fighters. It, it, well, I don't want to say necessarily that, <laughs> but I, I, I'd like to believe that they, they you know. I, they, lo- they I love the your optimism, and Shane. And the optimism of Shane Graham is really yeah, impeccable. Yeah, I'd like to believe and they, they buried the Shane. hatchet and they I hope say, it rubs you know, off we're here to make each other better. All right. Well, hey, uh, I spy Jimmy Partica just walked in the building, so we're going to take a quick Jimmy break. Jimmy Partica, we're jeans gonna, and flip-flops per usual. Yep, coming in, shaking hands, kissing babies. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to get him on the air. We'll be back after that. Stay tuned. SFL Radio. And we are back with SFL. <laughs> <laughs> SFL radio video at the UFC gym in Norfolk. There's Eddie. Anything can happen now. Eddie. Anything can happen. <laughs> Anything can happen. So here we are, Jimmy Partica, live for the first time. What do you think, man? Pretty cool, pretty cool. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at a bunch of people's uh, training. <laughs> 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 training. I, like, good, as good. soon as I say that, I look over and I'm like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, All right, yeah. cool. Training. Cool. Um, so yeah, actually we're here at like prime time. So all the classes are in full swing. They got like striking classes and fitness kickboxing classes and over in jiu-jitsu. the cage jujitsu. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty nice little layout in here. Yeah, I was here when they were first building it out, and it's been a little while since I've been back in here. So I mean, I hear a lot of racket in the background. I don't know what it is. So one of the <laughs> members in the audience asked when you were going to start training. What's that? <laughs> some, some guy with a, with a butt nut on his head. <laughs> some audio difficulty. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, we wanted to give you a chance to come on, talk to uh, the fans, and uh, tell us what you got going on, what's what's coming up in the future. Cool. Um, well, we got SFL 35 coming up. We're pretty pumped up about that. TKO for the Tatas, working with uh, uh, Making Strides Against Breast Cancer. So it's our one-year one event where we're working with a non-military organization, but... Uh, breast cancer, you know, it's it's one of those things that knows no color, males, females, um, you name it. I mean, most people have probably known somebody in their life that's been affected by it. So it's a pretty cool event. You know, we dress it up with pink and um, Jenny pink. Mac. I see they do pink gloves and everything, right? Yeah, yep. yep. pink gloves. We've got little pink things that they put on the tables. And I think uh, maybe next year we'll start doing a little bit more, little by little, trying to add a little bit more to it. You might see some uh, some new tablecloths that have like the logo done in pink. Nice. Uh, just a couple of little little touches, and we'll kind of increase it uh, next year a little bit more. Um, I was looking for a pink mat. They don't make those, but yeah, <laughs> I thought that looked kind of cool. So maybe uh, maybe we'll get a different mat with pink logos. I don't know. We'll we'll look to expound on it next year but um for the time being this year yet we do the pink gloves which is kind of cool i've ordered some new medals so the medals should be in pink um that'll look kind of cool look just like the other ones that we give out except for instead of blue we just switch it out with the pink and we got a pretty cool fight card Uh, i'm still trying to lock in you know a female fighter too i've got two fighters that are trying to get on the card Uh, different weight classes different experience but uh it's killing me trying to put one female bout together in this. I know, right? It's crazy. Oh, well, we can There's, go. We'll go through the gym. I see some some yeah. females with purple gloves out there. We'll go check it out. See what they want. want to fight. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't we know. If that, I don't know if that location. one's gonna be one fifteen or one twenty five. <laughs> um, so, 
Maybe 126. You know, we give one at, we give one yeah. pound over the weight. <laughs> we still make 126. So if you're listening to this and you're a female fighter, <laughs> contact us. We'll get you in there. And actually, if you're listening to this and you can't see us, go to the Spartacus Fight League YouTube channel and you can check out the video of this podcast. If you're watching this and you would only like to listen to the audio, maybe in your car or something like that, you can go to SoundCloud or Google Play and you can listen to our cast there. Nice. You never know, Mikey. They're gonna see this video. It's like that's what they look like. Yeah, we're going back to right yeah. there. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna sit and watch this video with my <laughs> eyes shut. Well, it's funny because we're, we're actually working out after this. So, like, I was just like, I'm just wearing my workout clothes because I'm getting ready to. I worked jump out right before in. I came here. Of course, no you, yeah, of course, of course, <laughs> no big deal. I did uh, today. So today, a few years ago, uh, on this day, we saw your I, post. Uh, yep. We're yeah, gonna yeah, ask yeah, you about yeah. that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I had to get in the workout today, the anniversary Big Navy, joining the Navy workout. So, kick kicked my ass a little bit today and uh, ended up causing me showing up a little bit late today to get here. But I had to get it in, man. It's, it's been a good run. Was it uh, 20 years today? Something like that. Ish? You know? <laughs> 20 Ish. years ish? <laughs> you had to put the number Let's out there, Let's just Mike. say July 18, <laughs> a couple years ago, I boarded a flight. Frankfurt, Germany, flew straight to boot camp, and uh, here we are. It's been... It's been a cool run, man. I can't complain. Um, it's surreal that it's coming to the end. The retirement date's changed like three times. This one looks pretty solid, so uh, I think that's going to yeah. happen. October You'll retire 5th. eventually. <laughs> yeah, so October 5th, that'll happen. And um, right after the retirement ceremony, we got weigh-ins, and then we got to yeah. fight the next <laughs> night. So it's pretty crazy how that worked out. I mean, for people that don't know, um, and just to clear up any assumptions, like I don't really pick the dates. So I don't go out of my way to double book with other people or double book on top of other people. Usually our dates are six months out, and I have to work around the Ted Constan Center schedule. Um, because of that, um, you know, during the fall and the beginning of the year, you know, football season, you got basketball going on simultaneously. Anytime there's a football game, they use the Ted Constan Center's parking lot. That's right. So nothing can happen at the TED. So even if it's a Saturday and there's nothing going on, it's like, well, why is this guy not doing the fight? this Saturday. Well, there's an ODU football game a block up and they're yeah. utilizing the parking lot. So it makes it very difficult in the fall. Usually we do second or third week of October. None of those were available. Um, so the word I got was, hey, October 6th, you know, kind of take it or leave it. Taking it. So for my friends and family that are coming in from out of town, it'll be cool. We'll catch a retirement, potentially go to the weigh-ins, and then the next day they can come to the fight. So it's a cool little weekend for them. It's, it's a no-sleep weekend for me. As this usual. Be as cool. usual. When it'll be, do it'll you be actually worse. sleep? It'll be worse, though, because I'll have Never. people like, you know, family and shit. They're like, oh, let's go to dinner. Let's do this. It's like, oh, yeah, I got to deal with the fight card. You know, <laughs> like, my life revolves around that fight card. It's, it's unbelievable. The last event with the new cage and everything else, I don't think we got home till we didn't leave the venue till 2.30 in the morning. I mean, wow. I didn't get home and to bed till around 4.00. And by 7.30, I was back up, already answering emails. Three and a half hours later, I'm back up, I'm answering emails, I'm already working on the fight card. Um, so for people that I'm trying to match up, you know, just be patient. I don't forget about you. Once I put you on my roster for this event, I'm consistently looking. Um, it just happens to be a busy month. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, but obviously, you know, we host the biggest event. Um, you know, Ted Constance there, you can't beat it. There's not a bad seat in the house. We don't do gyms. We don't do convention centers. We don't do Masonic lodges. We don't do sports plexes. Like we do a big box. Pack. That's it. Yep. That's what we always talk about in the cast. Is that the you know? And I'll throw a couple of photos and uh, and video clips up on the the video here. But the jumbotron. I mean, everything is just insane. The quality. I mean, like even so. The, I always say that the the first time someone fights in there, like it's, they even tell us it's so it's overwhelming. Huge. To them, it's like coming out at a UFC event. It's like holy crap, and just getting past that, it must be difficult for them, you know, to even focus on the fight. And yeah, and I mean, you know, and I don't mean to cut you off, but even in the back, I mean, we've got there's TVs in the locker rooms. I mean, I've been to events before I ever launched this. I remember, you know, going to an event, and sometimes they don't even have locker rooms. They put up like little pipe and drape, and you got people changing. I mean, we got full fledged, <laughs> yeah, we got full fledged locker rooms. There's TVs back there. You can watch the event live, you know. And last event, I remember walking to the back, and I was. Guys were getting taped up, and I caught Rick McCoy and some of the guys from MMA Institute. And like, they had their back to me when I walked into like the little admin office that GCA usually uses. I walk in, I'm like, hey, you know, looking around. It's like 10, 15 people back there. They're all watching the TV screen. They're watching the fights that are happening live, yeah. like right behind. It, it was pretty crazy, but I mean, <laughs> it's 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 a full fledged, you know big production. I mean, even gloves. I mean, these guys will come in there. We we fit them for gloves at weigh-ins. 
They're putting on a brand new set of gloves, and they're walking out with those gloves. It doesn't matter if that fight lasts 60 seconds or, yeah. you know, if it goes three rounds, you're getting yeah. a brand new pair of gloves. I mean, every, medals. every match. And if they come back the yeah. next SFL, they and get brand new one. gloves every time. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and what I was going to say, getting back to that point, uh, I, I truly mean that and I embody it when I when I introduce you inside of the cage, you know, the man, the owner, the founder, the man, all things Spartica. Oh, yeah. Uh, you were just mentioning a minute ago that you're getting ready to retire. You're active duty military. This huge production, all of the work that goes into it, you know, the, the custom gloves, the, the the entire production itself, the fight card, you're, you're pretty much a one-man show, and you're active duty. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's crazy at times, trust it, me. It, it is. is. I can, it's and it's, being my, active duty, I just retired, and I can tell you with the stuff that I do on oh the side, with the, but I, it doesn't even dent what he does, and that's why I was thinking... I felt like I couldn't fit another thing on my plate, and then oh, I watch what he I, does. I, I can totally relate. You know, and I try to track him down. I'm like, Jimmy, I need to meet up with you and give you a check. He's like, I'm in San Diego, and I'm like, yeah, it was what funny. are you doing? I mean, <laughs> when I finally saw him yesterday, he was just like, man, I know you're busy because I've held on to these checks for like four or five days. Like, when you're too busy to even pick to get up money. to yeah, get money, yeah. you know, past due sponsorship money, it's just it's been busy, man. And I do a lot of traveling. I'm in and out of town a lot, and uh, when I. When I get back, it's just like, even though I try to stay up on stuff, it's just like, it just keeps coming, man. I mean, we've got, you know, August 11th coming up, and then August 18th, the following weekend, we've got our Spartaca Fallen Heroes 5K. It's back at the Sportsplex, so still working logistics with that. You know, you start talking about permits and sponsorship and insurance and brace bibs and medals and designing all this stuff, coming up with different names and coming up with different, you know, t-shirt schemes and colors and ring girl outfit. I mean, it just doesn't stop. Man. I mean, but I tell you what, that design right there, uh, I thought came out really cool. The shirts from last time, and I think we're gonna run some more of those with the big warrior head on the back. Um, I think we're actually gonna slap that on the side of our new trailer as well next Wednesday. I like the, it. The guys over at AG Wraps, uh, I think they're gonna throw that on the trailer, I think next Wednesday. So it looks cool, man. I thought nice. it was really cool. Cool design. A lot of people liked it. A lot of people were asking about it, uh, getting shirts. I actually mailed some out to St. Louis. Somebody saw me post it online. They're like, hey, man, there's no way I can make the fight, but you know, I'd love to buy two of those shirts. Just tell me where to send the check, and you know, here's my address. So I thought that was pretty cool. Excellent. So do you foresee any of this changing? I guess this is a question. When you finally retire, um, I guess in theory. I feel like it's going to go. I, we're going to throttle I, I think, up. We'll I, think, throttle. I think you're going to throttle up. I mean, I'm hoping that. So I, you know, kind of hoping I don't. I mean, yeah. So you're going to have more as as time to dedicate to this. So Yeah. So, I mean, for me, you know, I'm retiring October 5th. I might go to Europe for like a week. Um, I kind of want to go back to where my old high school is at. Like, I never saw any of that. You know, once, once I joined the Navy, I jumped on that plane. I left for boot camp. I think I've seen four or five people I graduated high school with over this whole whole span of time. So I'm going to take a couple days, go over there, do some sightseeing, um, see my old high school, my old elementary school, all that stuff. Some of those bases of decom since then, but I'm going to check that stuff out. But yeah, November, as soon as I get back, November 3rd, we're in Groton, Connecticut for our Red 5K. November 11th, we're doing two Red 5Ks, one here on 24th Street and one in El Paso, Texas. So, I mean, I've got... As soon as I get back in November, still be on terminal leave, but I've got three events within eight days at the very beginning of November. Um, so we still got a lot of stuff going on. I mean, October 6th will be our fifth event of the year. So 2016, 2017, we did five events. We had moved it up from four to five. This year, you know, we're on track for five again, knocking out August 11th and then October 6th. So uh, that puts us three years in a row doing five events. Um, we've consistently, for over seven and a half years, done at least one event every single quarter. And it's crazy because I'm on shore duty now, I'm on instructor duty. I do some travel, not as much as I used to, but when we first put this thing together, I mean, I, hell, you've been to more events than I have because some of the events I'm out of town, but I mean, there's times where like I'm working on fight card issues and I'm sitting in Tunisia, you know, I mean, the embassy <laughs> there got hit. That was always the running yeah. joke. Yeah, like, oh, just, wow, Jimmy's doing this from the Mac flight. It's crazy, man. I mean, it was uh, done 34 international flights with that command the first four years of Spartak Fight League, but we never skipped a beat. And if you didn't know any better, you'd think there was a full staff and all these other people doing things. And I mean, it's crazy to think that the first four years of this company, we've done an event every single quarter. And I did 34 international flights. I was in Africa for one event. The one and only event we did at the Scope, I'm sitting in Africa. I was in, I think, Nigeria at the time. But it's a uh, beautiful place, by the way. Yeah. It was an interesting, you know. <laughs> I've been there. That's why I was like, 
And we had a good time in Nigeria. Overall, we had a good time in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's been crazy. I mean, we're, we're a consistent brand. We're not going anywhere. We're going to continue to grow. Um, I think a lot of people see what we're doing, and they're like, oh, we can do this. This is easy. Oh, this guy, you know, he's killing it. And then for all these people that think I'm making all this money, it, it's surprising because I see these other promotions charging $35, $45 for general mission tickets, $60, $80, $100 for cage site seating. And it's like they're not even in, like, big venues. We let fighters get $20 tickets. Like, most times, our tickets are half the price of these other venues. We give so much more out. Our venue cost is through the roof compared to what these... I'm not even going to say what it costs. The Tech Constant Center does a great job. I appreciate everything they do. Um, their staff goes out of their way for us. But, like, it's not free. There's a lot of money that gets spent. So when I hear people... Oh, he's, he's only... I had some other promoter hating on me online. Like, oh, he only cares about money, you know. He's only worried about lining his pockets. It was like, if I'm lining my pockets, why would I be doing triple plated complete custom belts i mean you right. get guys yeah. like mitch aguiar walks into the into his last fight with us as an amateur with forty five hundred dollars worth of belts between him and his entourage that are walking out there if I'm, I'm so worried about lining my pocket he'd be walking out with one belt that's right <laughs> one yeah. damn belt. and it would be yeah. in a high school gym i wouldn't be yeah. getting out i'm the only amateur promotion that i know of that gives out brand new gloves i mean hell even when i work with other bigger promotions these guys would be stepping i mean they're they're on spike tv they're stepping out of the ring or cage. They're going to the back, and somebody's back there cutting their gloves and taking their gloves right from them. That's right. We got <laughs> amateur <laughs> fighters that are O and O independents walking out with a brand new set of gloves. It's like, come on, man! Like we continually reinvest in this. We had a big part of UFC coming out here last year, working with Glory. There's talks with some other promotions. There's some other bigger promotions coming out to the area. Like we've helped put this place on the map. You know, and it's because we're a consistent brand. Like we've, it doesn't matter what's going on. You'll never come to a Spartaca Fight League event without knowing of the next event. From the very first event, we already had SFL two locked in. When you came to SFL two, SFL three was locked in, and we've done that every single time. I haven't let my life, my personal life, my marriage, my military career, nothing's gotten in the way of us doing something every single quarter. So yeah, when I retire, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna take it up a notch. Um, you know, other people can come in town. They can try to take fighters from us. They can promise all this bullshit. But at the end of the day, we're a consistent brand. We're not going nowhere. So if you want to stay with somebody consistent, you know, I'd recommend stick around with somebody that's been here for seven and a half years. And you know what? You, you heard it here first. That's right. And, you heard it here first. And you get to sit down with, with me, Chris, Shane, and Eddie. I mean, that's a <laughs> treat I mean, in itself. Is, yeah. there, is there another amateur brand out there that has a podcast? No. 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 I don't no. know. Pretty sure uh, only one other one does, which I don't have to say the name. And what about the logo? I mean, how sweet is the logo? <laughs> like Mike, Mike flags and stuff. Yeah. yeah. You got logo polo shirts. Cool. I'm not wearing one today because I'm, tra- I'm about to train. I didn't want to change. But Three of us are wearing, I guess, the Coasty. I had a little thing I was going to send you to today. I forgot. God. It was like a, a little, little Coast Guard Well, then joke. in that case, shout out to, to the Coast Guard too. Tactical Law Enforcement <laughs> Association I am repping today. So, you know, no big deal. Yeah, big shout out to the Coast Guard. I mean, you know, sure. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. I am just giving you a hard time. I'm just, you know, it's inner inner military no, humor, I, but it's like we definitely. Big one of the cool bus. things here, Chris, you never served before. No, right? I did not. All right, so you and Man Bun, you guys are kind of the same, but I mean, it's good. Like Mikey hit me up just before I retired. Twenty years Coast Guard. We definitely appreciate his service. We got Shane Graham. He's also a Navy veteran, so it's it's pretty cool to be able to, you know, um, you know, work with veterans, retirees, and stuff like that. Um, and it's also just been an honor serving and being able to honor people. And I think I kind of put that in my post today. Um, it's crazy to be on active duty and then to be able to have met some of these wounded veterans and met some of these wives and mothers of fallen heroes and kind of learn their story and hear them talk about their kid, you know, their, their son or daughter, their husband or wife that, you know, passed away and, uh, you know, the ultimate sacrifice that they've made for us to be able to live in this great country. So. Yeah. Big shout out to the military, Coast Guard included. Thanks. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we count. <laughs> thank you guys for all the hard work you guys do as well. No, thank you. That. Thank you for having us. This is great. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take a break. We're going to come back with, uh, with Mr. Man Bun. We're going to go over a couple more of the fight cards. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to wrap it up. And uh, me and Chris, have some, we have some fat to cry. We have to sweat it out. <laughs> there so, you go. There you go. Now that people can we see us. we got to look good for October 5th. So I'm, I'm training them. Gotta squeeze back hey. into my dress whites. I refuse to buy a new uniform, so it's like between now and October fifth, man, we're gonna make it happen. I'm excited <laughs> to wear a suit to your retirement. It's like nah, finally, it's, I can't. No, no, I'm not no. shaving this off for a pretty yeah. uniform on. Put a fucking crazy. Uniform on. 
We'll see. This is, is Coast Guard allowed? I got a lot invested. I in think this. you can. You, once you're retired, you can still wear your uniform. You With got a beard? Yeah. I'll look into it. I'll look, look into, into it. it. Hey, but uh, I thought th- that was part of the agreement with this whole UFC Norfolk thing was you were going to wear your Coastie uniform. What are we talking about? I mean, about I still got my dress rules in my closet. Did we talk about that? Do you? No, we didn't. Yeah. Oh. Anybody that served, <laughs> has served, thinking about serving, I'll put just, your uniform I'll on. be out of regs with my beard. <laughs> hey, I did have one thing. Uh, what do you think about this idea? People keep bringing it up. When we actually get in shape, a little exhibition of one of the uh, SFLs, me and Chris. What we need to do is... Um, we need to get LBT. So I think uh, like ADS Warrior Warrior uh, East just happened last week, and uh, they had their uh, what do they call it? Their uh, BAB, the LBT BAB oh, big, ass big ass bag. The big ass bag, yeah. So it was the big kit bag. I took a picture of it. It was the day before they were open to the public. I walked by it, saw it. That was kind of funny. Took a pic. So uh, the people from LBT, they're going to come out to this fight event. But oh, a long nice. time ago when Rocco was with the LBT, we used to do those demonstrations. Remember yes. inside the cage? So they would put on their little suits. So maybe that's what we got to do. We got to put you guys in like in the, the whole suits. red man suit. Yeah. <laughs> you guys go out. We'll do that during intermission can we like get we did in, back Can we then. get a little bit more in shape so that way it's not oh, yeah, 10 yeah. seconds? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> before we're out of gas and we're like... <laughs> <laughs> We'll figure something out. We'll make yeah. that work. Maybe yeah, we'll yeah. reach out to LBT. And, and, and just to clarify, LBT stands for London Bridge Trading. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. So I, uh, just, I know who you they know. are. I do, I do for, the for the people at home. home. For the people at home. home. London Bridge Training. <laughs> Trading. Sir. All right. Trading. Excellent. We will uh, take a quick break. We will be back after this. SFL Radio. And we are back with SFL Radio Podcast, video podcast at the UFC Gym in Norfolk. I'm Mikey V. And I'm Chris Alani. And I am the Eddie Mercado. And I am Shane Graham. There we go. So we just got done uh, with Jimmy Parka. Had a lot to say. It was awesome. Information passed. Uh, he was very passionate did. today, yeah? Yeah, he was. He, he seemed very, very uh, up today. I think it was all up. the yeah. fighting. and I love the energy love while we're doing this now. Oh gosh, yeah, it's it, different it's than cool. my back porch where it was like chill. And here, I don't, can we drink? Now here, I, I don't know. I was thinking smoking cigars. That that was uh, nice. <laughs> See, that was the that was the advantage of the back porch. We got the yeah. cigars and the and the bourbon and all that stuff. But I don't know. I don't know if we can do that in here. Uh, it might be frowned upon think, in yeah, this establishment. <laughs> so <laughs> we were we were talking about the fight card. Uh, we have two other ones that we wanted to announce. Uh, Justin Harrell and uh, Justin Spires battle the Justins. Ooh, yeah. There can only be I one. I think that the Justin <laughs> that loses should have to take the nickname Bieber. As a uh, for losing, I, I, I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> That's pretty harsh, bro. That's a pretty harsh. Uh, <laughs> that is, no, but this is going to be an awesome fight. Um, yeah. So Harold, Harold, he uh, he wrestled for ECU down in North Carolina. Um, absolutely uh, handled business and at SFL 34. Yep, Chris Scales defeated Chris Scales. Um, really looked good used his wrestling uh and he's so bricked up man like just looking at this guy it's like holy crap this dude is he spent some time in the gym oh, yeah. say. you know what i mean yeah. like the dude is 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 ripped and uh spires he's the goon the goon, the goon. that's right goon. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh he's a diego bispo guy so he's training under harvey grassy with the muay thai yep. um, he's two and oh he, he's two and oh he had a, a, a very dominant showing at sfl 34 himself he uh, defeated Chris Simpson, brother of David Simpson, yep. by a rear naked choke. So uh, this is this is going to be fireworks. I, I think would, this is going to be. I would not blink. That's my yeah, advice. Do yeah. not blink for this one. I'm excited about this one. And Justin's a great interview too. He's an awesome guy to talk to. Super intense. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Sweet. Which which Justin? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave it at that. Leave it at that. Leave it at that. Hey, I think. I think Justin's going to win. I think Justin, I, that's my prediction. I think Justin's going to win this fight. I think you guys are wrong. I got Justin in this one. I'm, I'm, I'm with, I'm, I'm with the we'll Eddie Mercado on this I one. guess we'll see. Either way, I think we're it's all It's just in. Uh, <laughs> come, moving okay, on. Moving, moving, moving on. on. And then oh, the uh, 165 catchweight bout with uh, Devon Smith and Preston Hawker. Oh, that's, man. That's going to be an exciting fight. Uh, the pastor of disaster, Preston Hawker, of a veteran of the Spartaca cage from many, many moons ago. SFL 10 was SFL his last 10 fight. SFL 10 was his last fight. Like he, was actually, uh, he was actually the subject of a documentary really? uh, called Fight Church. Okay. Uh, that was really, really neat. Um, Preston, obviously, a pastor in Virginia Beach. His father, a pastor as well. Well, they did a, a documentary on people of the faith, you know, people of the cloth that also compete in mixed martial arts and they had you know the, the conflicting views the different sides trying to reconcile your faith you know that was one of the the taglines you know can you 
love your neighbor as yourself while at the same time punching them in the face as hard as you can. People of the cloth, I like that. Yeah. And that's, that's actually a really good point. So uh, as everyone knows, so I, I write for BloodyElbow.com and I interview fighters and whatnot. And I interviewed Stephen Wonderboy Thompson and I actually asked him that question. I asked him, how does he, how does he rationalize being a man of faith but also wrecking shop in, 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 in combat sports. And uh, basically he was just like, yeah, man, I got the gift to fight, so that's, that's what I use for my platform, yeah. so it is what it is. Yeah. And uh, well, Preston Hawker, kind of the same thing. Um, so thir- this Thursday I'm actually going to his church to film his promo video. Really? So oh, wow. uh, be on the lookout for that, and we'll get a little, uh, little behind the scenes as to what goes on at the fight church, so to speak, and kind of tell his story a little bit. And I believe it's uh, he's fighting for a good cause. It's to ra- raise awareness for something. So be on the lookout for that. It'll, awesome. it'll be on our SFL YouTube page. Yep, yep. We'll post Facebook it on uh, all that jazz. Yeah, I'll say we'll post it on the uh, SFL uh, Facebook page and the uh, SFL Radio Facebook page as well. Do you think they visualize their opponent as like a devil or like a demon? And they're like, they're trying and to like, smite. Oh, like I will <laughs> smite these. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good question. Uh, uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It, it'll be interesting too because Preston, uh, married to his beautiful wife, they've been together oh. since high school or even before uh, his wonderful wife and and they just recently had a kid as well so you know Preston took some time off took some time away from the fight game you know became a father um, w- worked on his faith you know and his in his uh, his church a, a little bit more and now he's uh, well he's coming back into the fight I, game. I hope he's ready because Devon Smith is not gonna lay down on this one he's coming off a two-win streak SFL 33 and 34 he yeah, won so. second round submission uh, against Hunsaker last SFL 34. So yep, he took on Luke Hunsaker at SFL 34. Handled business. I think he got a rear naked choke. He's a he's a fearless fighting guy. So he's coming out of the, the same camp as Troy Kane and Justin Harrell and those guys. And uh, he's on a tear right now. Yeah, he's so got a lot of momentum behind him. This will be interesting. Someone who's been really active, kind of. You know, he has that momentum behind him against someone who's kind of returning to the sport after a little bit of a hiatus. And, yeah. and speaking of interesting, I'm going to be interested to see if Troy Kane finally came up with another nickname for himself this time. <laughs> I, I think that every event that I've done for him, he he's had a different, you know, and Troy, then, the, the Spartan Kane. I say the, the name Kane, like there's so many cool I, things you can do with that. So and it's I like think I, I, suggested, Kane, I suggested Supernova, so that might be his next one. Okay. Okay. Troy <laughs> Supernova <laughs> Kane. Hey, I'll talk to him. Maybe, sure. we can do another, maybe we can do another vote. <laughs> on the SFL radio I page. I see what you did there. I just got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it took Shane a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, yeah. Shane's like, he's doing it. I can see the wheels in his head go. It, 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 actually, it took Troy a second to get it too. He didn't realize it at first. And he was like, oh, okay. If you're actually, a listener and you haven't gotten it yet, just say it real slowly in your head. Supernova, which is, never mind. Just, okay, we got it. We got it. All right, so, uh, yeah, I mean, as you heard from Jimmy, we got a lot of things coming up. The uh, weigh-ins are going to be August 10th, the night before, at West Beach Tavern. West Beach Tavern is uh, 5000 Cleveland Street, Virginia Beach. It's a really cool pub, a lot of live music. Actually, that night there's a concert like two hours after the weigh-ins, so if you want to stick around for that, um, that's going to be at 6 p.m. There's going to be a mini press conference, as always, afterwards. Uh, awesome food, awesome drinks. going to be a cool, cool spot to chill at. Uh, August 18th is the 6th annual Spartaca Fallen Heroes 5K Virginia Beach Sportsplex. I was actually just there at the Caribbean Fest, and it was funny because before I had seen the 5K, I was like, the Sportsplex is such a cool venue. And I was like, man, there's not a lot of stuff that goes on there, and I feel like it's underused in the area. And then now here we are doing the 5K there. That's going to be dope. The, the yeah. Virginia Beach Sportsplex? Yeah. Yeah, well, it, ironically, that was where the very first Spartacas took really? place. Yes. Oh, okay, there's a little history. Uh, that's going to be at 8 a.m. It's a $35 registration day of the event. I think it's a little cheaper if you do it in advance online. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing it. You want to do it? The 5K? You can. We can like run, walk it, or we can yog it. So I will. Ag- I will aggressively walk it. Yes. Like you know. So you throw that in there. there it is. Little well, hip, I don't know. You got. You got some time. You get in. Get in here to the UFC gym in well, Norfolk and get a couple that's classes right. you know, in. Yeah. But I don't know if you'll up. be 5K ready in less than a month. So. You'll be. You'll be 5K ready. I'm, I'm, I'm positive. He's doing two a days. He might be. I have faith. So if you want, uh, me and Chris Alani will be doing uh, the 5K at, at some type of pace. Join us. Uh, there'll be refreshments. Yep. More importantly, there'll be beer at the finish line. It's going to be yeah, awesome. Yeah, we got to do it then. Yeah. <laughs> <I gotta, laughs> the, the, the ultimate, ultimate motivator. Yeah, I, got him on the I was waiting at the end first, just in case he said no, to be like, well, there's beer, and now you can't have it. <laughs> so that's going to be awesome. So uh, I'd like to thank you guys for coming out to the first video podcast. Um, 
you know, not that you're not real guests. I mean, you're, but you're really part of this show because you've been I feel on like almost I'm a permanent guest. You are. I've been like you've a, been. At, you're really uh, your co-hosts because you've been at I almost guess. every one of them. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to test this capability out before we, we brought in a fighter. But uh, we're here at live at the UFC Gym Norfolk. This podcast is brought to you by them. Fifty nine thirty East Virginia Beach Boulevard. Uh, big shout out to them for having us. Big uh, shout out to Dan Brooks. Come, yeah. The the man is Dan the man. He's Dan the man. Come see him. Come in. Ask about a membership. Tell them SFL Radio sent you, and uh, we will see Reap you. the benefits. Yes. Reap all the benefits. Oh, I almost forgot. The SFL 35 press conference. Yes. Mm. August 3rd. Mo- Mona Lisa Pizza. Mona Lisa Pizzeria, where we have it every time. Great pizza. That's uh, 6.30 p.m., 3574 North Military Highway. So. This is... No, we got... Oh, the, wait. The guy that does this oh, is smart. The actual so dude who does it. <laughs> All right. Sometimes I forget you're here, Shane. You're so right. quiet. Unless right. I hear the the sexy rumbling of his voice, I'm I lose him. Shane, three, two, one. Can we get a, this is Sparta? This is Spartica. No, we gotta get like no. a thing. <laughs> Every time. I can't, you know, and then the class is gonna stop, okay. and the, they're gonna be like, "That's too fail." All right. Yeah. Well, I'll, I have your recording. Are you doing it? So I'll just play that. We're double failing here, guys. Uh, yeah. Okay. Ah. All right. Say quiet. As quiet as we can. Yeah. Thanks this. for tuning in. We will <laughs> see you guys. That's three fails. Next That's time. It. That's it. Ready? Ready? This <laughs> is Spartica. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Spartica. Spartica.